what's going on guys <clears throat> so kind of doing something new in the discord first off if you're not a member of the discord that link is down in the description box below join the discord small tight-knit community uh ranging from people with small accounts to bigger accounts to guys who trade you know small caps and meme stocks to people who trade amazon tesla and the big tech stocks but that's not what i'm going to get into the video about this video i'm going to be a little bit more chill uh nothing going on on my screen other than the big beautiful bull the big beautiful ox that is in front of us uh, my website is evolutiontraders.com. You guys can uh, sign up to be a gold member, get private access to me and my private chat in the Discord, as well as my daily watch list. Also, as well as my strategies and how I trade. I have two courses, one for scalpers, a very, very beginner based. And the other one is a more advanced for people with a little bit larger accounts who are looking to, you know, really understand the game. But the the topic of this video Basically, I threw out a question. I want to know what your biggest problem is when it comes to trading. Okay, everybody has a problem when it comes to trading. Myself, I still have problems that I work on each and every single day. Um, <clears throat> doesn't matter how long you've been trading. It doesn't matter if you've been trading for a month. It doesn't matter if you've been trading for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You're a lifelong trader. Um, it really doesn't matter. We all deal with our own problems when it comes to trading. Some of us have known, some of us have learned how to master and identify what those problems are and how to work through those problems when they arise in our trading. So first person that reached out on the Discord, um, you know, kind of a general vague answer, but uh, one of their problems is swing trading. Okay, so they blew up their entire account swing trading. Okay, nothing to laugh about. Obviously, all of us have different financial backgrounds. Some of us have very, very small accounts. Some of us have larger accounts. Um, you know, it's never a good feeling when you blow up an account. I do not really believe in the whole mantra of you got to blow up two to three accounts before you're actually profitable. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that you ever need to blow up an account to learn how to be profitable, but I do believe in more screen time. I believe in more hours at the trade desk. I believe in more technical analysis, research and breakdown, and I believe a lot more in testing your theories and your strategies over and over and over, and also testing yourself. So with that being said, I think a lot of times that whole mantra of, you know, I blew up two, three, five, ten accounts, and now I'm finally profitable. I think that you started with a little bit of money. Uh, you lost that little bit of money. And along the ways, you kind of learned yourself who you are as a trader. And then you kind of tested your theories and your strategies became and got better over time. And I think that by that time, you're on that second, third, fourth, fifth account, whatever that may be. You finally have things sort of dialed in. Um, you don't really now with the internet, with YouTube, with Twitter, with books and you know, whatever else, mentors. There's a lot of people you can learn from that have been there, done that before. There's a lot of people that can mentor you. There's a lot of people that can kind of give you their guidance, whether that be free guidance. A lot of this stuff is available online for free, guys. Um, and if you're more of a person who needs that one on one interaction, you need, you know, someone to kind of tell you that tough love that, you know, that slap in the face. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. There's also those type of coaches, teachers, mentors out there as well. Um, you know, but just kind of starting back, going back to the, you know, to the question about, you know, uh, swing trading and blowing up your account. And that seems to be the biggest problem in trading. Well, <clears throat> The very simple answer is stop swing trading, okay? Stop swing trading. So normally people swing trade when a couple of reasons. You have a smaller account size and you don't have any day trades available to you, meaning that you know you fall under the pattern day trade, uh, pa pattern day trade, the PDT rule, and you know you're under twenty five thousand. You don't have unlimited day trades, so you have to pick and choose you know, how often you're trading, 
Um, you know, so you're forced to swing things, whether that be an overnight swing or whether that be a week swing, two week swing, three week swing. The only problem that you're going to run into with swing trading, if you have a relatively small account, um, and if you're also swing trading options, is that if you are yes wrong on the move, meaning that uh, your entry is bad and you're not self-disciplined and you don't cut your loss early, you're going to blow up your account time and time again until you kind of master those things, uh, picking good entries and having good self-discipline on when to get out of the trade. So if your problem is swing trading, stop swing trading, okay? It's time to dial back and scale back your size. It's time to dial back and scale back the amount of trades that you're doing, but you also need to document your trades. So it's just like this. If you have one bad trade, okay, let's say you have a strategy, um, you know, you're working whatever the strategy may be, right? Um, previous day high break, okay? Stock breaks previous day high break. I'm going to get long. Uh, as long as the stock doesn't close under previous high low, I'm going to stay in the trade. I'm going to take profits along the way. Very, very simple strategy. Very, very easy to use. Um, you know, it's not too difficult. I'm just going to use that as an example. So let's say you buy into a stock. It's a previous day high break. You buy into the stock. It runs up 50 cents. Wasn't your price target? Stock retraces on you, ends up closing a dollar and a half underneath your entry price. Now you're faced with the decision one, you didn't have a clear stop loss going into the stock, uh, two, you wanted to give the stock a little bit more room to work, a little bit more room to wiggle. Day three opens up, price gaps down, closes two dollars and fifty cents lower. So now you're down three dollars and fifty cents. Now you do not want to sell, you want to hold. Because, you know, you want the stock to come back. You're just looking to break even, this, that, and the other. So those type of trades will happen. But if you have a clear, uh, you know, a clear stop loss, you have a clear trading strategy plan where you know that, hey, I'm going to enter into this stock. If this stock closes 50 cents below or it loses this moving average or it loses this previous day's low or it loses this previous hour's low, I'm going to exit the trade. You exit the trade. You move along. Okay. Not every trade is going to work. So sometimes you have a strategy. Your strategy is yes, right, 60, 70% of the time. The other 30, 40% of the time it fails. The difference between a winning trader in the long term and someone who blows up their account consistently and repeatedly is that you do not cut your stop loss when you should. You have too much pride, um, you know, your, your wishful thinking uh, you're following too many people on social media that are posting massive gains. They're posting, you know, good dinners. They're posting Lamborghinis. They're posting uh, P&Ls where they made $50,000 off a trade. They're posting all this bullshit and nonsense that is feeding your brain to saying that, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. Of course, that's that's completely possible with anything. Um, I, you know, I have a, a friend who is a local uh, real estate agent, a very, very successful real estate agent. Now, could I become a real estate agent and make a lot of money? Of course, but I don't expect to just get into the game today and make, you know, a shit ton of money when this person's been doing it for over 10 years. They have a clientele, they have, um, you know, the strategies, marketing strategies, advertising strategies they use to get their clients, this, that, and the other. So it, the same thing goes for trading. Can anyone do it? Anyone can do it. But the difference between you and me we could have different psychological uh, viewpoints. We could have a different ego. We could have a different uh, price target. We could have a different uh, risk tolerance. So there's a lot of different reasons as to why one person succeeds and the other person fails. So with that being said is I would take your mind and I would take your eyes off of social media for a solid month for the next 20 trades. Okay. And what I mean by this is that the next 20 trades, I want you to take the same strategy, the same uh, entry for all 20 trades. So if the example that we're using is we're going to be an overnight swing trader, right? Or a day trader. If we break previous days high, we are going to get long the stock, okay? 
If that is our entry point, we're going to take that entry point for the next 20 trades, okay? And we're going to document this is why we took the trade. This was the previous day's high. This is the price that it broke. And my stop loss is always going to be previous hour low price, okay? Now, if it breaks that previous hour low price, I'm exiting the trade no matter what, Okay, if it continues to stay above that previous hours low price, we're going to continue to let the trade work and we're going to take profits accordingly. But I want you to take the same trade strategy set up for 20 trades. Get your head and your mind and your eyes off of social media. Don't give a shit about what anyone else is doing other than what you are doing. Okay, you have a strategy. You have a stop loss. You have a price target. You take that strategy entry point for the next 20 trades. You document the next 20 trades. If the trade doesn't work out, put your ego to the side. Put what everyone else is doing on social media to the side and screw them because at the end of the day, someone else is not clicking the button for you. Someone else is not giving you money to trade. Someone else doesn't care if you win or lose on the particular trade, okay? So with that being said, okay, with that being said, if you document the next 20 trades and you take the exact same setup, whatever your setup may be, I have two or three strategies that I use on a day in and day out basis. Those strategies can be found at evolutiontraders.com. Pick up one of the two of the courses, pick up the gold member complete lifetime access course. You'll have access to all of my trade ideas and strategies. But it doesn't matter what strategy you use or what I use or what the next person uses. Take the same strategy day in and day out. For the next 20 trades, I want you to document every single trade. And when the trade fails, trade failed because of this. Trade failed because of that. I could have had a $100 loss, but it turned into a $200 loss because I let my ego and my pride and I let my, you know, my brain tell me, that the stock price is coming back up. Stock price never came back up. I lost $200 when I could have lost $100. The goal and the whole goal of this game is to continuously stay in business for as long as you can. The goal of this game is to stay in business for the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years, the next 40 years, the next 50 years. The goal of this game is not to this next trade, I'm going to hit a home run in this next trade, this stock is going to skyrocket 10, 15, 20 points, 100 points. The goal on this trade is to make 20, 30%, okay, or whatever that is that you have have set in place according to your rules and strategy. The goal on this next trade is not to, hey, this stock is going to squeeze. Everyone else is saying that this stock is going to run. This stock's going from 60 cents to $5 or from $5 to $10. That's not the goal. That's an unrealistic goal because how many times can you continue to do that? And how long are you going to continue to stay in business? Every day, stocks go up and stocks go down. Professional traders trade the market in a bear market as well as in a bull market. They don't need a stock to short squeeze on a day in and day out basis. They don't need for a bunch of momentum on one particular small cap stock to explode and that's how they make, you know, their careers and their livings. Those trades happen, but that's not how they make their bread and their butter on a day in and day out basis. So if your problem is swing trading, I want to take a step back and tell you this. I think your problem is you. OK, you as a trader is the problem has nothing to do with swing trading the market. OK, there's plenty of people even in the past month, two months, the market has been choppy. We've lost a 50 day moving average. It, it turned uh, bare for a little bit. Now it looks like we want to reclaim some levels and go back to bull and put another leg higher, possibly potentially in the fourth quarter. The market, you did not blow up your account because you were swing trading. You blew up your account because of you, okay? At the end of the day, if I enter in personally, if I enter into a scalp, and let's say I'm entering into Apple at 148.50, my price target is 150, right? Or 148.50, I'm looking for 
25. I'm looking for 75 cents. And that price breaks the level where I'm going to enter the stock, runs up 10, 15 cents, and immediately sells off for 50 cents, sells off a dollar. And I do not stop out of that, even though I have a stop loss set in place, a mental stop loss. Uh, it broke levels on my chart uh, technically because I think that it's coming back up. That's nobody's fault but myself. It's not the market's fault. It's not the FOMC meeting's fault. It's not the Fed Chair Powell's fault. It's not you know what the government is doing. It's not Joe Biden's fault. It's not uh, the bulls. It's not the suits. It's not the hedge funds. It's not this person on social media gave me bad advice. It's you. It's you. So in this particular case, day trading may work better for you short term because of all those other factors. Okay. You're not taking in the news as a factor. You're not taking in the futures market as a factor. You're not taking in momentum on the stock drying because it was a pump and dump and you got in late. Everyone else is taking profits and you're buying. Sure. Day trading can be better um, if you know your levels. However, day trading can also be catastrophic to someone who enters into the market and think that they're going to make, you know, one to two points every single move because that stock can also go down one to two to three points just as fast as it goes up, just as fast as it can go down. So the moral of this story is if you have problems swing trading and you do better day trading and that fits your personality and that fits your emotions right and that fits your style better and you are under the 25,000 PDT rule where you can only day trade three times a week, then you only day trade three times a week. What you're looking for is a plus setups. You're looking for those setups to confirm. And when those setups confirm, you're going to take that entry with superior confidence in your entry. And if and when the stock doesn't do what you want it to do, and it hits your stop loss, or it breaks that technical level of support, you are going to exit the trade at all cost. If that means you can't trade anymore until next week, you used up all your day trades, it's only Wednesday, and you can't day trade until next Tuesday, then so be it. Would you rather wait three or four days to trade again, or would you rather keep blowing up your account, chasing back losses, and continuously losing more? So, Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, why am I losing these trades? If you do not have an answer like that, okay, I should be able to ask you, okay, on the last five swing trades that you did, why did you lose? Why was this a losing trade? Bad entry, held too long, was trying to recover losses. What was it? What was it? What is the answer? If all of these answers are different, well, on this trade, the stock was green, but then overnight the futures dumped and in the morning we had a Fed talk and that dumped the market. Okay, there's one excuse. If the next bad trade that you had or losing trade was, well, I bought at the top, uh, it looked like it was going to break a technical level. I thought it was going to get there, never got there, but I thought the market is strong. It would break tomorrow. Okay. That's telling me that you don't know technical levels. Did you not know supply was ahead? And if let's say you got into the trade and it worked, say 75 cents, a dollar above your entry, why was that not good enough to take profits there? Why did you continuously hold longer than you should? Well, I was hoping that, you know, the hope is going to get you killed in the market. Wishing is going to get you killed in the market. Okay. Trying to get back and break even is going to get you killed in the market. We have to be reactive. We have to react to the price action and we have to react to our own emotions and, uh, you know, put ourselves in check when we're in 
the trade. A lot of times traders will get into a trade. I'm just going to use myself as an example. Sometimes I've gotten into a trade five contracts. Uh, 20, 30 minutes later, those contracts are up 20, 25%. Okay. I sit and tell myself market is strong, but my stock is starting to fade. So now that 25% profit that I'm up on my contracts now be, turns into 18, 19%. There has been times in the past where I have told myself, I'm going to hold on to this contract a little bit longer because it's coming back to 25%. And you want to know what happened? That contract went to 10%, went to 5%, went to negative percent, went to negative 15, negative 20. And next thing you know, I lost out on a 20% winner because I was hoping that it was going to go higher. I lost out on an 18% winner because my pride got in the way and I thought it was coming back to 20, 25%. Does that make sense? So the whole point is, is that you are not always going to make the same amount of money. Let's say you make $500 on a trade does not mean that the next time you make a trade, you are aiming for $500. If your next trade made $50 and you made that pretty fast and pretty clear and your entry was correct and your price target because supply was above 50 cents and you know that you just made $50 on that trade, just take that off the table. Even if that means you can't trade for two or three more days. Okay. A lot of times people who are under the PDT rule try to make these massive home run swings. You guys try to, you know, well, I can only trade one more time this week, so I need to try to make $200. I need to try to make $500, okay? You guys are like holding out in hopes that you're going to hit this home run instead of taking, hey, you know what? My strategy told me to enter in at this price. As soon as it confirmed this price, I made $50 pretty fast. My price target was X, Y, Z. It hit that pretty fast. Well, you know what? That price is that, that profit was only 50 bucks. Who gives a shit if it's 50 bucks or $5, if it's $50 or $5,000, you think that next person, that next trader, that guy on Twitter, that guy on YouTube, that person you read about, that person you've seen on Instagram gives a shit if you made 50 bucks versus their $10,000. Nobody gives a shit. Just take the profit that is given to you when you made a yes, right move. How many times have you entered into a trade and almost like instantaneously you're in the green, you're in the money, the stock price is up 50 cents and you could have taken that little piece of the pie off the table and be and you know, become a winner, but instead your greed told you it's going higher. If I just hold this, I'm going to make more money. This other person traded this stock two days ago and made $10,000. And the next thing you know, the trade has worked against you. Market news has worked against you. The futures market have worked against you. Swing trading uh, and time decay, if you're trading options, has worked against you. And now that gain is now a break even that gain is now a loss so it's not swing trading okay it's not swing trading that has you all screwed up it's yourself that has you all screwed up and if you're entering trades consistently and you tell me i entered 20 trades i used this particular strategy and 19 of those trades after I bought immediately within five minutes, within 20 minutes, within an hour, all were negative and in the red and they were losing trades after I bought them. That is a different problem, my friend. That problem is a bad strategy and that problem is a strategy that needs to be fine tuned. That is a strategy that needs to be reevaluated. But if you have a technical analysis strategy, you know, they don't always work 100% of the time, not even 90, not even 80. A lot of strategies will work 50, 60, 70% of the time is, is really, really good. 
you know, that other 20, 30, 40% of the time, you kind of have to cut your losses and weed out those bad plays and nip them in the butt right when they happen so you can present yourself another opportunity for another setup. I hope that kind of makes sense. If you want me to elaborate a little bit more, leave me a little bit more information in the Discord about potential particularly what is the problem after you enter into these swing trades that is causing you to lose. But here's two things that I want you to do. I want you to have a strategy down packed. Whatever that strategy is, I want you to use that same strategy. Do not deviate. Do not buy this stock because it, it's just green today and has momentum or this stock because, you know, it just set an all time high. I want you to pick one strategy and I want you to play that same strategy for the next 20 trades. And I want you to document those 20 trades. I want you to have a clear stop loss before you enter into that trade. And if that stop loss is hit, I want you to just exit that trade, forget about it, write it down in your journal, move on to the next setup. When you get to 20 trades and you do this consistently, consistently taking the same setup, using the same stop loss, I want you to give me your results at the end of 20 trades. If it, if they are losers, you have more losers than winners, then we will sit down together and I will help evaluate what your particular strategy is. And if you your strategy is particularly not working, you know, I will kind of help you out with my strategies and, you know, kind of, you know, maybe you should buy my course or, you know, get one-on-one -on -one coaching or something like that uh, to kind of learn and self-discipline yourself. But I think the biggest problem that you have is yourself right now. Okay. Hoping, wishing, praying for bigger gains instead of taking smaller, uh, to, instead of taking smaller games because, you know, it's not good enough. It's not good enough to who? If you make $20 a thousand times consistently, who gives a shit, right? You see, you kind of see what I'm getting at. So it's not always about showing off. It doesn't matter if you make $10, bro. If you can make $10 three times a week, that's 30 bucks a week. Okay. That's $60 every two weeks. That's $120 a month. OK, you just slowly start to compound those wins and now you increase your position sizing. Maybe you're buying more options contracts. Maybe you're buying more shares. OK, so it doesn't matter about the dollar amount. Take that out of the equation. Take the same setup. Document your trades. 20 setups, 20 trades. Turn social media off. Have your own strategy. Don't have a strategy. Go to evolutiontraders.com. Okay. I'd rather you invest in yourself than to keep investing into losing trades. I hope that helps.